Okay. That's me. Uh, my name is Liam Martin. This is Running Remote. This is the first ever, well, not first ever, this is the largest remote conference specifically designed for building remote teams uh, in the world. And I am one of the co-organizers, Liam Martin. <clears throat> and we're going to be talking about a ton of stuff over the next couple of days. Really great group of speakers. But if you'll indulge me, I'm going to give you a couple of minutes about how this conference came together and more specifically, uh, a little bit about me. <clears throat> so I'm unapologetically Canadian, and Steve is actually Canadian as well, which is awesome. And uh, thank you for a couple of the Canadians in the audience. <clears throat> and my day job is I work at Time Doctor and Staff.com. And we build tools to empower remote teams to work better together. So we have employees in 28 different countries all over the world. And this wasn't something that just kind of popped up uh, for us. This is about 10 years in the making, and it actually came from a bunch of failures that I had in building remote teams over the last decade. So as I said before, I'm Canadian, and in Canada you do one of two things. You either play hockey or you figure skate. And at 13, 14, I just got more attracted to the figure skating side of uh, the sports world. I didn't want to get pucks in the face any longer. So I ended up competing internationally and ended up actually breaking my leg at uh, 20, and I was completely out of the game. I was off of being an Olympic hopeful. It was literally, it was, it was a very difficult time in my life. And thankfully, I got accepted here on a prayer. I didn't even finish high school, but they let me in, McGill University, uh, which I'm always thankful for. And I took my undergraduate and graduate degree in sociology there. <clears throat> and I had been teaching, uh, I had been a teaching assistant for about seven years, and then on the eighth year, they let me actually lecture a class, which was uh, huge for me. It was that next moment of my life, because I really wanted to actually teach. And I remember the day before actually going in to the lecture hall, this is the first class of the semester, and for anyone that's been to university, uh, you understand that you never actually teach anybody something on the first class of the semester, but I thought, man, I'm going to be so good. I put together an hour and a half presentation, uh, and I gave it on that first class. Long story short, I started with about 300 students in that class, and I ended up with a little bit above 150 students finishing the class. And I also got some of the worst ever reviews in all of McGill history. Here's just one of them. Worst Prophet McGill, I think he enjoys watching everyone fail, not super helpful or nice to students, just horrible. So <clears throat> I walked into this guy's office. This, this is uh, Morton Weinfeld, my supervisor. And I said, Mort, I don't think I'm very good at this. And he said, no, you're not. <laughs> and I said, so what should I do? And he said, well, you know, you've got to really do this lecturing thing for the next 10 to 30 years before you get to do something really fun. So either get much better at lecturing or figure out another profession. And six weeks later, I threw one of the most horrible theses under his door, and I was out into the real world. And the lesson that I learned from university was I really liked teaching, but I didn't like lecturing that much. So I turned that into a business which was enabling people to be able to get tutors to work with them remotely. So it was a remote tutoring company. We had almost 100 tutors throughout North America and Europe, and uh, it was a fantastic business. However, I was working about 12 to 15 hours a day, and I remember I chipped one of my teeth, and I went into the dentist's office to figure out what the issue was. And so he opened up my mouth, took a look in, and he gasped. And it's never a good idea when a health professional gasps when they're looking at you. And he said, Liam, which tooth did you chip? You've chipped all of your teeth. What the hell are you doing uh, with your life? And it was due to stress. That's what we discovered. He said, you either have terminal cancer or you're way too stressed out. And we found out that it was just stress, thankfully. Uh, and I realized that I had to do something differently inside of that business. Otherwise, I would just was not going to succeed. Me personally, not necessarily the business. So I think a lot of you might be in that same place right now. 
uh, running remote businesses, figuring out, yes, I know that remote work is definitely the way to go, but what barriers do I have? How can we get past them? How can we get to the next level? And this is what this conference is entirely about. Uh, and this guy is, is Igor. So he's the general manager. Where, where is Igor? <clears throat> so Igor is running, running remote. And uh, about a year ago, we were in Barakai at our last team retreat. And uh, we were talking about how do we get our team to collaborate better? How can we hire people more efficiently? And Igor said, there must be a conference for this. And so we started Googling, and about a day later, we found, we found nothing uh, that could really solve our problem, which was how to build serious remote teams. So then I went to Rob, who is my co-founder for timedoctorandstaff.com. He carries that gun around everywhere, so be very careful. And uh, so I pitched him the idea, and I said, you know, I want to do this conference in Bali, and it'll be awesome. And uh, he said, yeah, OK, OK, OK. Uh, you won't sell more than 20 tickets. And so I put this slide up here just to kind of tell him formally that he can eat it, basically. <laughs> um, so one of the biggest questions that Rob had was, OK, but we're a remote company. Why do we need to go to a physical conference if we're a remote company? Doesn't that kind of sound weird? And I'm sure a lot of you might have had those types of questions. So I'm going to address that here. So <clears throat> number one, there's no real information yet, particularly for larger remote teams, which are the people that are assembled here today, on how to get to the next level. So you, there's a lot of information on hiring maybe your first employee or your second employee, but hiring your 100th employee or your 1,000th employee is very difficult. There's also not that much precision as well. So how do you collaborate on design properly? How do you build a support team remotely, a sales team remotely? There's not that much information. Secondly, we want to really figure out where remote work can go next. So I know that everyone here understands remote, but there's a lot of people that don't, and we want to be able to figure out how can we get that message to them. And then third is collaboration. So we want everyone to be able to get in the same room and actually sit down and start talking about best practices to build that playbook that we're really looking for to come out of the next couple days. So that brings me to the mission statement of what this conference is all about. So we want to empower workers to work wherever they want, whenever they want. And that's actually tied through our own companies, a version of it, and it's also connected to this conference as well. And if anyone wants to talk about the mission statement, for me, mission statement is super critical to figure out the right direction uh, for things like this. And you're all participants now, so I want to get as much feedback as humanly possibly possible from you. There's a lot of positive stuff about remote work. There's also a lot of negative stuff about remote work. And we're going to take an even look at each side. So number one. Remote workers have a 25% higher retention rate than their on-premise counterparts. 65% of people want to work remotely uh, by some reports. And it's actually the highest employee perk for millennials. That's the one they want most, more than anything else. They're about 35% faster to hire. And remote work is way up. Uh, last year in the United States, 43% of people worked remotely in some capacity. There's also a lot of not so good news about remote work. Um, about 70% of remote workers feel left out in comparison to their on-premise counterparts. There's about 40% more infighting in remote work, by some studies, uh, in comparison to, to others. There's an supposedly 84% uh, slower rate of collaboration than on-premise counterparts. And remote workers, 67% of them, say that projects change without their input in comparison to their on-premise counterparts. And that previous stat that I mentioned, 43% of US workers worked remotely in some capacity. Only 3% worked full time remotely last year. So there's a lot of people testing the waters, but no one's really jumped in yet. And I think that's something that we can also change. So our goals for this conference, number one, if you've just got a couple remote employees, or if you don't even have remote employees and you're really trying to figure out how to do that, uh, we've got a lot of talks connected to just getting you up and running. So 
uh, how to hire properly, how to structure your businesses properly, those types of things. Second, if you've already hired people and you're completely remote, we want to get you scaling. We want to get you up and running and operating uh, at a much higher level. So there's a lot of talks connected to that as well. Third is we want people to get clear on remote work. So if you've got an organization and you really want to just refine your processes, there's going to be a lot of talks connected to that as well. And fourth, I know that everyone here has like is drinking the Kool-Aid with regards to remote work, but we also just want to help you guys get your message out to more and more people uh, about remote work. Because for us, we see it as a movement, not just necessarily a business model. There's a lot of people that are going to help us uh, to be able to accomplish that goal today. And we also have a ton of sponsors. Um, we're going to be talking about them throughout the conference, but one that I want to focus in on is Heech. Does anyone know Heech? One person. OK, so here's the crazy thing. So Heech comes to us and says, we want you to be a gold sponsor. And it's a, uh, a two-sided car sharing app, right? And so we said, OK, well, we'd love to be able to work with you and see how we can you know, make you some money or, or make this conference worth it to you. And this was their response. We wanted to sponsor Running Remote because we firmly believe that remote will be the way to work in the coming years. And initiatives such as Running Remote should be supported to spread the word. We are the biggest remote team right now in France. And even though more and more people are asking me, how do we do it? And they're starting to show interest. We, in a way, feel a bit alone in France. So sponsoring the conference is a good way to show that France is participating in the movement. And that's what I truly feel that we're talking about right now. We're talking about a movement. We're talking about empowering workers to just be so much more happy and successful in their lives. And who are we all here today? We're 257 companies. Uh, we're representing about 25,500 employees. Uh, we're also representative of about $11.8 billion in company valuation. I actually forgot to change that slide because GitHub just got acquired by, for $7.5 so we need to add that on top of it. And uh, companies here, 56% of them are majority remote. And I also want to talk about the impact. So going remote is actually better than going vegan. It's better than giving up your car. Uh, it's one of the best ways that you can help the environment. And just in this room, represented by the employees that are here, we save about 150,000 tons of carbon. That's like taking 32,000 cars off the road. And only one sixth of the people of our employees here work full time remote. So what if we could get that up to 50%? I mean, the impact would be, would be huge. I also want to talk about some of the attendees that are coming here. So there's a lot of fantastic speakers. There's also a lot of great attendees. Alan uh, is an absolute behemoth at online marketing. This guy is killing it on fluentu.com, and he's doing it entirely remotely. We've got guys like Rodrigo, as an example, who's an amazing UI, UX, and designer. He builds fantastic websites and web applications, and he's an expert at online collaboration. So we are right here in Ubud, Bali. However, this is the breakdown of all of our attendees uh, that are here today. So about 41% in North America, in Australia, 4% in South America, 2% in Africa, 27% in Europe, and 26% in Asia. However, this is the real breakdown of remote workers today. So I also want to be mindful that we're all here. We can afford to come here and, and stay in this beautiful paradise. but. Remote work is also about empowering people that wouldn't have opportunities in their local areas, and they can now access the global talent pool. And that's something else that I'm really passionate about as well. So if you have any questions, ask people with these t-shirts. They'll be able to uh, answer them for you. And our Slido question was, what's the average size of the remote team that's in this room? And it's actually 108 people. So you're here with your best in class. Uh, I'm really excited about everyone that's going to be here over the next couple days. Please ask me questions and give us a lot of input on how the conference should be put together. And I hope you enjoy the next two days. Woo!